Hello, my name is Mario Viviani and I'm technology evangelist at Amazon. We are here to talk about implementing voice control with the Android Media Session API on Amazon Fire TV. Amazon Fire TV allows customers to enjoy media content like movies and TV in a lot of different ways. Using your voice, for example, Amazon Fire TV allows you to control your movies and TV applications in a very easy way. On top of using the voice remote that ships with Amazon Fire TV, starting this year in the US, UK and in Germany, you can connect an Amazon Fire TV and an Echo device, and then use your voice to control the playback of the video app on your Fire TV. Amazon Fire TV Cube allows your app customers to go hands-free and just talk to your apps using the embedded Firefield microphones. This is what voice controls on Amazon Fire TV look like. Alexa, fast forward two minutes. Alexa, rewind 30 seconds. I'd say you're too confident for your own good, but I've seen your record. Because I have seen yours, and your confidence is justified. Alexa, pause. Alexa, next episode. These features are achieved using the Android Media Session API integrated in your application. Now let's see together how you can easily integrate the media session in your Amazon Fire TV application. The first step is to add the voice control permission to your Android manifest. This will allow Amazon Fire TV to identify your application as voice enabled. There are quite a lot of commands that are available through media session and they are all related to media playback. There are controls like play, pause, fire forward and etc. But how does the media session implementation work? There are two main components, the media session and the media player itself. The media session provides a set of callbacks, which are linked to all the actions that are available to the media player, like play, pause, skip to next, etc. The voice control directly map into this media session callback, meaning that every time a customer executes a voice command, the media session callback is then invoked. Let's say that the customer says, Alexa, pause. The on pause callback of the media session is then called. What we will need to do then is invoke the actual media player method, pause, from within the media session callback. In a way, media session acts as a middleman between the Alexa command and the actual media player in your app. Now, there are five main steps to implement media session correctly in your Fire TV application. The first step is to initialize the video player. Then, we need to initialize the media session itself, configure the actions your application is capable of perform, for example, play, pause, next, etc. The fourth step is properly manage the media session inside the activity lifecycle. And finally, we set up the media session callbacks which is where the magic happens. And we connect voice commands themselves with the actual media player inside our application. The first step is to initialize the video player. The first thing that we have to do is in the on create of our application. We set the content of our layout and then we initialize the video player itself. There are a lot of different media players that you can use in your Fire TV application. For the sake of today's tutorial, we will use the standard Android Video View, which provides all the most common callbacks that you would expect in a media player. Inside the onStar method of the application, we initialize the media controller. The media controller is the component that displays on screen the current playback status of the media and some basic information like uh, the controls. We pass the media controller to the media player using the method setMediaController. We then pass the video URI, which is the address of the media that we want to play. In this case, 
we hard coded uh, an MP4 file. While in a real world scenario, you will probably f uh, fetch this information from your backend service. Finally, we request a focus for the video. The next step is to initialize the media session itself. It is good practice to initialize the media session uh, once the video player is ready to play content. Most video players provide the listener, which advertises that the video player is ready to play content. In this case, Video View provides us the unprepared listener class, uh, which provides the unprepared callback, which signals that a video player is ready to go. We initialize the new media session, which receives the application context as parameter and a string, which is a tag to uniquely identify the media session. Then we set the callbacks using the method setCallback. Don't worry now about these callbacks, as further down this tutorial, we will see how we will define these media session callbacks. Finally, we set the media session's flags, handles media buttons and handles transfer controls. These flags map the basic remote controls uh, buttons to our media session. It is important to notice that even though our customers might use voice to control the playback, they might also use the physical remote control. The next step is to add the actions to the media session. In the unprepared method where we initialize the media session, we now create a new variable, which is the playback state. This component is used to tell to the underlying media session that the current status of the playback uh, is a specific one, like for example, is uh, playing or is paused. And it also defines which actions can be performed by the media sessions. This is why we use the method setActions to set all the actions they want our applications to be able to perform, like play, pause, fast forward, etc. We then set the playback state to state plane. We pass the current position, which by default returns zero, and then we pass a float, which indicates the speed of the playback with one meaning normal speed. Finally, we pass the playback state to the media session and activate the media session using setActive. The next step is properly manage the media session in our activity lifecycle. When the customer interacts via voice with their Fire TV, an overlay appears on the screen to show the Alexa interaction. At this stage, we need to pause the playback and gracefully manage the behavior of our application. In the onPause method of activity, what we need to do is create a new playback state, pause the video player, set the media session to not active, and we will still need uh, to pass the newly created playback state to the media session itself. Notice here that we need to set the actions once again. The reason for this is if we want to set the actions again, the newly created playback state would be technically actionless. So it wouldn't be able to map the voice controls back to the media session itself. Basically, it would not be possible to use voice commands using this specific playback state. The same thing we need to do in the onResume method. We set the media session to active, set the playback state to plain, and then create a new playback state still set in the actions. We do the same thing in onStop, which is called when our application is stopped using playback state stopped. In the final activity lifecycle event that we need to manage is on destroy which is called uh, when the application is terminated. In this case, the only thing that we need to do is release the media session, which might be used by other applications. The final step is to set the media session callbacks. This is where the magic happens and where we actually connect the voice commands and the actual behavior in our media player. The media session callbacks are multiple and mimic the commands available in the media player. These are the commands that we will see play, pause, seek to, fast forward, and skip to next. On play is pretty easy. We set the playback state to state playing, we start the video player, and then we just update the playback state and possibly hide the media controller. On pause is similar. Set the playback state to state paused, pause the media player, and update the playback state accordingly. 
In this case, we will show the media controller as we want to display the UI to the customer, showcasing at what stage the playback is. OnSeq2 is an interesting implementation, and this is where you can see how powerful the implementation of voice control is. This method allows us to fast forward the content by a certain amount of seconds, minutes, or even hours. This method is invoked when the customer says forward and add a certain amount of minutes. For example, Alexa fast forward one minute and 30 seconds. In this case, the Alexa voice controls automatically convert what the customer is saying into milliseconds, which in this case is passed to the SIG2 uh, position as the variable pause. The great feature here is that we as developers don't need to do anything to correctly parse what the customer is saying, because that is managed automatically by Alexa. However, the customer might also just say fast forward without specifying an amount of seconds, minutes, or hours. In this case, we need to implement the fast forward method, just passing a predefined amount of milliseconds. In this example, we are passing 10,000 milliseconds, aka 10 seconds. The last method that we see is on skip to next. This method really depends on how you have implemented your application and how you fetch your next video. You will likely create a skip to next video method which fetches all the information to skip to the next video. To recap, there are five main steps. Initialize the video player, initialize the media session, configure the actions, manage the media session in the activity lifecycle, and set up the media session callbacks. You will have to do all these things if you want to implement media sessions from scratch in your Amazon Fire TV application which is pretty easy as we've seen. However, at Amazon, we want to enable you to build high quality applications for Amazon Fire TV in just a few minutes. In order to do this, you can leverage the Amazon Fire App Builder. Amazon Fire App Builder is a plug and play template for audio and video applications and allows you to create an app in less than an hour. It contains modules to enable advanced functionalities. It handles JSON feeds custom branding and customization, fully supports Amazon Fire TV family, and it also fully integrates the Media Session API and voice controls that we've seen in this tutorial. They work out of the box, so you don't have to do anything to enable them, which is pretty convenient. Fire Builder provides modules for features like in-app purchasing, subscriptions, social login, advertisement, analytics, and custom media player. All of these are plug and play and you can swap them in and out uh, of the application depending on what you need. To find out more about Fire App Builder, go on github.com slash amazon slash Fire App Builder. If you're interested in finding out more about Amazon Fire TV development, you can download the free ebook How to Develop Media Streaming Apps for Amazon Fire TV, and you can find it at the short link bit.ly slash Fire TV ebook. Thank you very much for staying with us today. Here you can find my contacts, ping me if you have any additional question, or even just to let me know that you added media sessions to your Fire TV application. You can download the slides of this presentation here, and also make sure to follow me on Twitter at the one and also please follow at Amazon App Dev to stay up to speed with new Amazon technologies. Thank you very much and happy development on Amazon Fire TV.